Hi everyone, in this video we're going to handle multi-pass rendering of an image. This actually means that I'm not going to pass an image in a sampler once, but rather twice. And this will give me a base image and then upon that image I can add much more details and enhance the image to my likings. It gives you more flexibility about the final result. We will also take a look about a little bit of post-processing an image inside Confi UI. And this will actually also be used as a basis for upscaling that we will deal with in the next videos. So let's not waste any more time. Open up your Confi UI and let's go. Okay, so we're going to open up Confi UI and we're going to start with the default workflow. If you don't have the default workflow on your UI, you can simply click here the load default and it will load the default workflow for you. On the checkpoint, we're going to use a checkpoint called Reality's Edge. You can actually get it from the CVT AI. Of course, the link is in the description. And I really like this, uh, I really like this checkpoint. It gives a very nice result. You can see here the examples of the uh, model. I, I will add the link, as I said, into the description. And with that, we're going to add a conditioning or a prompt. In the positive prompt, we're going to put a close-up photo of a samurai warrior, black hair, no hat, no helmet, cinematic, high res, ultra detailed complementary colors, a vivid ambient natural light, and a fog. And on the negative one, we're going to put the text, the watermark. We don't want a helmet, we don't want a hat. I also put it in the negative and in the positive because it seems that it kept adding a helmet or a hat to the image and I didn't really want it. Um, so we will make the resolution 1024 by 1024 because this model is based on the SDXL and this is its natural image size. And we're going to choose here in the um, steps. 14 steps should be enough. We're going to do 6.5 on the CFG. And I will choose almost as always the DPM PP2M and the Keras in the scheduler. Besides that, I'm going to delete the same if save image for now because I don't want it to keep saving images. And I'm only adding a preview image. If anything here is not familiar for you, you can just check out my previous videos where I explain about workflows and the nodes. And what we, what we will do now, we will run the prompt several times until we find an image that we like. So in order to run it several times in one click, all you have to do is go here to the extra options. There is this extra options checkbox here. Once you click it, you can see that you have a batch count. So I'm going to put five in the batch count. Once I will click the queue prompt, you can see that the queue is now jumped to five. This means that it will automatically run the job five times in a row. Let's give it a minute or two to run and I'll be back. Okay, so it completed the run of five prompts and now we want to be able to see the history of the jobs that created in order to select the proper image to work with or to select the image that we would like most and continue the work. So in order to do that, you simply need to click here on the view history. We can remove the extra options now and you click here the view history. Here you can see a list of all the jobs that were executed and clicking on the load will actually load the image and all the settings that were used in order to generate that image. So you can see it actually changes the seed number to the seed number that was used to generate that specific image. Let's zoom in a little bit and see which image we like best to serve us as the basis for the next step. So I really like this image. Uh, this one I like less because you don't see a lot of hair and I keep asking no helmet, but it insists on adding it, but never mind. So I like this image also. This is actually also a nice image, a bit too modelish with the hair, if you ask me, with the wind and all that stuff. Uh, so I like this image and I like this image and I think I will go with this one. There's something about the way it, he looks on the camera and I like the detailing of the hair and the ear and the look in the eyes looks very nice. So we're going to take this image as the base image and now because I clicked the load and I can see the seed number, I will also paste all the information I used to generate that specific image on the description 
including the prompts and the seed number and the settings so you can follow along exactly the same way that I'm doing it. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is just change the seed to fixed. In this way, next time that I will click on the Q prompt, it will actually generate the exact same image. So let's give it a second. As you can see, it's done running and we have the exact same image. Now, because of the cache concept in Comfy, if I click Q prompt again, nothing will actually change and it will immediately show me the exact same image. This actually help us in the next step because now no matter what I will add on as a next step, it will only recalculate it to the steps that weren't already calculated. So it saves a lot of time and it doesn't regenerate the image from scratch. Now what we want to do is actually add another pass, meaning that we want to take this generated latent. If you see here, there is a latent being generated by the sampler and then we convert it and decode it into an image. So we don't really want this step. We will leave it so we can see the reference of the image generated. Instead of this, what we want to do is generate another sampler. So we're outputting the latent of the first sampler to the output of the second sampler. And on this sampler, we're not going to use a specific seed, but we are going to do something like three or four, even six steps. And we're going to do a CFG of around four. And once again, we're going to change it to the DPM to M and on Keras. The last parameter called denoise, what it actually does, it tells the sampler how much of the image going to make as a noise and generate new information. So one, it's actually a hundred percent. So let's leave it at a hundred percent for a moment, just to show you what happens. And now let's just connect a new positive and this time we want to create a prompt with the details that we want to add. We want to add wrinkles, we want to add some skin defects, we want to add some scars and wounds. And on the negative, I'm going to put an empty negative prompt. Okay, and we're going to use the latent image that is the output of the previous sample. And for a model, I'm going to use the exact same model. You can basically change it to different models if you wish. But for our purpose, I'm going to use the exact same model. And now output the latent with a VAE decode and generate a preview image once again. And we're going to connect the same VAE to the VAE decode. Reminding you that what VAE decode actually does, it takes the latent of the samples that the sampler generated and using a VAE decode, it actually decodes it into a visible image. Now we're going to put it ima the images side by side in order to see the differences and let's give it a run. I'm reminding you, first we're running it with a denoise of one, which will actually change the image completely. Let's take a look. I accidentally forgot to connect the clip of the model to the prompts and it gives us a warning. You see, can, you, can, you can see it colors the nodes in red, meaning that they are missing information that they require. And now let's click Q prompt once again. You can see it goes over directly to the second sampler because the first sampler is already cached. And what we've got now is quite a disturbing image of wrinkles, scars and defects in the skin. We don't really like it and this happened just because we denoised it in a hundred percent. So denoise one means that it's going to change almost the entirety of the image. You can see that it kept the overall um, positioning of the image but we don't want this we just want to add some recalls and some information so we're going to denoise 0.3 meaning that only 30 percent of the image will be changed and let's click q prompt again and now that the run is complete you can see that the images are very similar but if we zoom in you will see that here on this second image there is more information and you can actually see that it added the wrinkles next to the eye you can see that it emphasized the wrinkles on this side. You can also see that it also added some information to the hairs and to the ear. Overall, I think it did a good job and we can actually play with it. If we want a stronger effect, we can simply add a bit more steps and a bit higher CFG. And you can actually play with the denoise. The more denoise you will do, the, ch the more changes will occur on the image. Let's make it eight steps, CMG5 and a 0.4 denoise. 
And you see that once we made the denoise higher, the changes are much more visible and it actually made the samurai a bit older. This is very nice because you can actually use this effect in order to make him younger or older and uh, you can change the hair colors or things like that. So if, for example, I want to change the eye colors, I can simply add here blue eyes and let's make the denoise back to 0.3. You know what? Let's leave it at 0.4. It actually looks quite nice. And cue the prompt once again. And now if you look at the image, you will see that the eyes became blue and the image is overall the same. And this is basically the idea of creating a multi-pass rendering. You can render the base and then you can simply add and enhance and change the way the base image is rendered. Another thing I wanted to show you as a bonus for this video, it doesn't relate to a multi-pass, but it actually re relates to a post-processing the image. So we're going to add a node called Color Correct. If you don't see this node in your Comfy UI, you actually need to install. And here, just look for Post. And once you search for Post, you will see that there is a node called Comfy UI Post Processing Nodes. Click the install. Once again, you will have to restart Comfy UI. And once it is installed, you will have this node called Color Correct. What it does, it actually accepts an image. So we're going to take this image and output it here. And here I'm also going to fix the, um, the seed so it doesn't recalculate the changes each time I click on the Q prompt. Let's Q prompt once again. And now when it's done running, you will see that it added a third image. And this time we can go here and color correct the image. But for it to be easier for me to edit the image, I'm going to move this one to the side here. We're going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to make the image much, much, much bigger so I can see all the changes. Once, once again, I really like the image, but I want to fine tune it just a little bit. And this time, instead of uh, having to click Q prompt every time I change something, I simply turned on here the extra option and I clicked the auto queue and set it to change. What it actually does, it tells Comfy UI to be on a wait mode. And now every time I change something in the interface, in the workflow, you can see that it automatically refreshes and regenerates the image. Do note that it can be very dangerous if you put a random seed here, it will actually keep running non-stop because every time there is a new number and it actually changes the interface. So be sure to use this option carefully. And also when you use it, I don't advise you to do a save image because it will simply create and save hundreds of images if you're not careful. So use this feature carefully, but I really like it when it comes to things like that because now I can simply play and make the colors a bit warmer, not too much. You can already see the big difference and I can make it a bit more a bit, bit, bit more contrasty. And let's actually up the gamma a bit so it will be a bit darker and we can give it a bit more brightness, not too much so we don't burn it. And maybe even desaturate it just a little bit. I really like this image. I think we got a very good result. I like the look of the samurai. I like the overall story of the image. I also hope that you like it. So without a doubt, one of the stronger things about Comfy UI is the ability to do just what we've done here. It seems very, very scary at first, but once you get the grasp of it, using the nodes and, and using them to your benefits, generating workflows that actually match the exact things that you like becomes very easy and very natural. I really hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like, please subscribe. Love you, thank you, bye bye, see you in the next video.